And we're live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, my fellow Americans. This is a, um, oh, I guess I'm going to share this. Um, so this is just a video about woke Disney, something that actually has really, really been bothering me lately because anybody who knows me knows how much I love uh, Disney. So hello, Brianna. So I want to talk about a few things. I want to talk about the updates to Disneyland Park and the um, ridiculous woke messages in the Disney remakes that have come out and that will be coming out, such as Black Ariel. Nothing wrong with the beautiful black actress. Some of my best friends in the entire world happen to be beautiful black women. So we're going to talk about woke Disney. But before we get started, I just want to explain why I love Disney so much. This was my mom's sweatshirt from Disneyland. This was my Elsa baseball hat that I made to celebrate my love of Frozen in Disney parks. Here is a picture of, oops, there goes her ornament. Here's a picture of my mom and me in Disneyland, an American tradition since 1955. Um, there's my mom with her tiara and me in Disney. So. Um, anybody who knows me or if you've been to my apartment, um, I have a lot of Disney themed decorating, whether it's like Main Street USA or like old school frontier land in my bedroom or my kitchen that's like Americana. Um, I love, love Disney, but just like Delta Airlines, just like Nike, just like um, Coca-Cola, Disney has gone full on woke and it's getting to the point where it really actually just hurts my heart because I love it so much and it's been such a part of the joy and happiness in my family and um, and I was a Disney kid, 100%, and I still love Disney. I canceled Disney Plus because their Black Lives Matter woke programming, putting warnings on films like Peter Pan and Dumbo. I just, I thought, no, I'm done. So I canceled Disney Plus and I avoid purchasing any Disney merchandise that's not from a thrift store. Cause at least if you purchase a little treasure or something and it's from a thrift store, then your, um, your money doesn't go to them. Yes, Eric Anders Nielsen, my whole bedroom is Frontierland, Cowboy, Indian, all of it, like based off of the original concept of Frontierland. So where do we begin? Let's start with um, Black Ariel, because it looks like in the live action remake of The Little Mermaid, instead of casting an actress to represent the Danish fairy tale character who has red hair or looks like the cartoon that we all know and love so much, they selected a black actress. Her name is Halle Bailey. She's a very beautiful girl. This is in no way an attack on that actress. She was selected for woke reasons. Um, but my suggestion to Disney would be, why don't you make a new exciting movie similar to the 80s film Splash about a Jamaican mermaid or a Caribbean mermaid? Wouldn't that be cool? Add something. Don't deliberately try to erase a white character with your virtue signaling telling us that um, the, the, there's, the white characters shouldn't be there and it's, it's bad to have a movie with white characters. There's nothing wrong with being white. There's nothing wrong with the European heritage and European fairy tales. And there's also nothing wrong with adding something new and exciting to our world and the world of Disney. So um, those are my thoughts about that live action remake of The Little Mermaid. I'm not going to see it. I also didn't see the remake of The Lion King because of the woke evil actors that they chose to do the voices and I canceled Disney Plus. So I will always love Disney because I love the original vision of Disney. It was very American. It was very um, optimistic. And I will, I will always go to the Disney parks as long as two things still exist. Number one, the flag retreat ceremony. They, every day, they take down the American flag on Main Street and they honor all um, veterans and service members, current and who have served from the military, the Navy, um, 
I believe they honor the police, whatever. They, they do this beautiful ceremony and on Main Street on the loudspeakers it says, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, join us for the flag retreat ceremony as we honor the men and women of our armed forces. And then they say, please join us in singing a love song to America. And then the Dapper Dance come out, the little like barbershop quartet guys come out, of all races, by the way, and they lead everybody in singing God Bless America. So as long as they do that, I'll still go to Disney parks. Um, but I doubt they're gonna say ladies and gentlemen now um, when they announce it. So that, and also great moments with Mr. Lincoln, as long as they never get rid of great moments with Mr. Lincoln, then I will go, but honestly, if they get rid of those, those one of those two things, I don't think I'll ever go to a Disney park again. But the good news is Disney is primarily based off of real places around the world. So if I really need to go into the jungle, I'll go to Mexico. Or if I really need to, you know, experience Frontierland, I'll go to Arches National Park in Utah. But anyway, back to Disneyland. So there's been there's been some major incremental changes that are very culturally significant. Um, if you know the ride Pirates of the Caribbean, um, we all, I agree with you, Kim, this obsession with color is ridiculous. It's, it's out of control, but it's not about inclusion and it's not about diversity. It is, in fact, at the end of the day, an anti-white movement, which is why I take issue with things. I don't mind um, advertisements including people of all colors. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But when 95% of the ads now don't include a white person, it's a very clear message to move over, step out of the way, white culture is bad, white people need to be erased, check the patriarchy, and they just label everything as bad when it comes to white people. <laughs> and I'm over it. So in Pirates of the Caribbean, it's first of all, pirates, okay? Pirates. Pillage, plunder, rifle, loot, burn, terrorize, steal. So they had a section where they had it where it was um, take a wench for a bride and they were auctioning off fictional, you know, women in the Caribbean village being auctioned off. Not a very pretty idea, but it's Pirates of the Caribbean and they had the one lady in the auction, the redhead, and it was famous. They'd say, we want the redhead. Well, they replaced that entire scene with a female feminist pirate. And last time I was in Disneyland, this feminist female pirate, it, yes, it's also anti-Christianity, Eric Anders Nielsen, yes, it is also definitely anti-Christianity. So they have this woke female pirate walking around Disneyland promoting the update to the ride. So there's just one example. Another example is um, getting rid of Tom Sawyer's Island, where you used to kind of explore under the theme of the amazing, um, you know, historic story of Tom Sawyer and they replaced it with kind of this little pirate adventure. That one I can justify a little bit because modern world doesn't know Tom Sawyer the way they used to and it's more profitable to do the pirate theme, whatever. Mark my words, the Mark Twain boat along the rivers of America is going to eventually be claimed as racist because Mark Twain used, uh, you know, outdated language and terms in his books that people um, can't use. Uh, Monique, yes, you are a redhead and you're pissed that they removed her. It's like, let's talk about minorities, okay? Redheaded people are a minority. They are rarely seen. So why not have Ariel just have her red hair? So there's that. Okay, so now Splash Mountain, the ultimate amazing classic Disney experience from the smell of the water to the Br'er Rabbit to the plunge to the picture at the end to the music to zippity do da zippity yay I mean nothing is more Disney based on the film Song of the South a contra controversial film because uh, it's a story about a um, I think he's a shareholder he's not a slave but it's um, the Uncle Remus character brilliantly and wonderfully played by a black actor. I think it was in the early 1940s. And the film explores this black character and his stories of Uncle Remus, uh, of the animals from, you know, Br'er Bear, Br'er Rabbit, all of that. And he explains these stories to these children. And if you actually watch the film, 
the story is about two neglected children whose parents don't have the time of day for them, whose father basically abandons them, and Black Uncle Remus is their best friend. And it's heartbreaking because the parents kind of try to separate Uncle Remus and those kids and ruin their friendship. So it's actually a story about the magic of people with different colors skin coming together and sharing adventure and stories. Plus, the man won awards for his performance in that film. And to erase the film, pretend it didn't exist, is actually insulting to him, just like it is to Hattie McDowell, who played Mammy in Gone with the Wind. So it's just, it's totally ridiculous. So Splash Mountain is canceled. They are replacing it with a Princess and the Frog ride. Because she's black. Because she's black. There's no other reason to erase Splash Mountain and replace it with the Princess and the Frog other than she is black. Now, I love that movie. Love the Princess and the Frog. Love the all-American, hardworking character of Tiana. Nothing wrong with the Princess and the Frog. And I guarantee Disney could have found a way to incorporate a new Princess and the Frog ride Although in their defense, I don't think that movie is their biggest moneymaker. So they should only make rides based off of what's going to bring the most profit to their park. But Princess and the Frog is pretty darn magical. So they definitely could have created a ride themed with the Princess and the Frog in New Orleans Square right there. I mean, there's the perfect opportunity and Disney could have done it and kept Splash Mountain. But no, they're openly and deliberately erasing Splash Mountain to send a woke message to the world that we will have nothing that could potentially be called racist and we will replace it with a black themed ride. And there's nothing wrong with the Princess and the Frog ride. It'll probably be totally magical. I won't ride it just because they, they sacrifice something else in order to do it. Just like they sacrifice traditional Ariel in order to create this new upcoming movie. So. Number three is The Jungle Cruise. Now, The Jungle Cruise is lightly based off of the film um, uh, The African Queen with, oh, I forget her name. You know what I'm talking about, like the classic old black and white movie. It's based on British explorers. It's, it's based on their British adventures in the jungles of Asia and Africa, uh, kind of like Indiana Jones, but before that. And that was the whole theme of the ride. They had their little office area with their compass and their little treasures and stuff. My bathroom is actually themed after the Jungle Cruise and Jungle Adventure. I love it. But they're updating the ride. First, they're getting rid of the native people in the village in one part dancing around. Because apparently, depicting people doing what they did in the early 1900s, dancing around with sticks or whatever, um, is racist. So they're getting rid of that. I could understand that one. People might feel a little offended. I say keep it because it's been there since the 1950s and it's not meant to be racist. It's just a depiction of the conflict of British, British explorers going into the jungle and the people that they met, which is still the case. If they go into the deep Amazon right now. So um, they're not saying that these are depicting African Americans in 2021. No, it's just a depiction of, of going in the past. So the ride is now being updated with a new story. <clears throat> and uh, Albert Schweitzer was the fictional explorer who the ride was loosely based off of. There's a part with a waterfall and it's called uh, Schweitzer Falls. So now the new narrative is that he and I believe an Indian woman from India or another country, um, he had a, a biracial uh, relationship with this woman and they had a granddaughter. And now the ride is going to be themed after this biracial explorer granddaughter who inherited the exploration business and office and she's like the CEO, general manager and owner of these jungle cruises going through the jungle as a, as a strong biracial feminist business owner. No words. I'm just so sick of it. Okay? Why don't you just leave the ride alone? It is okay to explore European history. 
Disney and Disneyland is primarily based off of a European uh, worldview. Fairy tales came from Europe. Castles came from Europe. Um, exploration as we know it, like Indiana Jones and Jungle Cruise and all of that, the way that it's exciting to the Western world is through a European lens. Uh, Swiss Family Treehouse, Tarzan, all of it. Pirates of the Caribbean, I mean, The Haunted Mansion, um, Winnie the Pooh, it's British. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having a park where your rides are not, are not um, based off of obscure, um, multicultural things that people aren't necessarily aware of. If you want to expand Adventureland and maybe have people learn a little bit more about the authentic cultures from those places, like Polynesia or India or the Middle East or something, like have interactive shows or displays or, or special, special events where you learn about those cultures. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, in order to be woke, they have to erase and redefine anything that is white or European. And that's what they're doing with the Jungle Cruise. That's what they did with Splash Mountain. That's what they did with uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, that is what they're doing with The Little Mermaid. And um, I'm, that's what they're doing with all their advertising. So I just wanted to say something because it does break my heart. I truly just love Disney. It's, ugh, I always will, but I have to just separate in my mind um, kind of like Delta Airlines. I, I love what Delta was. When I was hired at Delta, I loved the company. It was a phenomenal company. Absolutely just the epitome of a great company. And now they are a woke, evil, globalist, China-loving sack of crap. And uh, that doesn't take away the good memories. So that's kind of how I view Disney. So I would just like to tell you guys, um, um, we are living in the Hunger Games, honey, and we're living in 1984. But I just wanted to tell you guys, I know we love Disney, but please don't give your money to Disney. If you're going to buy something um, Disney, go to a thrift store, go to Savers, go to Goodwill. You can find always like really nice plush, washed, revived stuffed animals. You can find toys. You could put together a little gift bag, but don't go to Walmart and buy Disney stuff made in China. Just don't do it and get rid of Disney Plus. Get out a DVD player and order used DVDs online and share those magic classic films like Peter Pan, Dumbo, Snow White, Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid with your families and for, for yourself um, without giving money to woke Disney because they are, um, they're dangerous and they made the Mulan remake knowing that there were concentration camps killing people in China, in the areas where they were filming, and they don't care, yet they had the audacity to insult the state of Georgia, and Mandy Moore, the voice of Rapunzel, came out and said we should never do business in that state. So, um, it's hard, it's hard. I recently ordered a hoodie on Amazon, and I got it, and it was made in China, and I realized we have to be vigilant in what we purchase, and what we subscribe to. And also remember, anytime you watch something, um, whether, whether you've already paid for the service or not, anytime you click on something, evil entertainment, like hip hop videos with terrible messages in it, even if you just consider it a guilty pleasure, every time you click on something and watch it, every time you give attention to these woke movies and money to these companies it gives them power and unless citizens take a stand stop being sheep and stop doing what just feels good like going to walmart and buying a buying a elsa barbie for your niece for her birthday don't do it don't do it and when you buy something at walmart or these other places just check the tag a lot of stuff is actually made in vietnam or other places that are that are um actually under threat from China. So just try not to buy stuff made in China. Don't give your money to Disney. And please share this video because I don't think a lot of people are aware of how woke and, um, and uh, terribly manipulative and leftist uh, Disney has become. And it breaks my heart to say that. So I will always love classic Disney. And I even love the film Frozen 2 despite some of its 
woke messages. But, um, you know, good and bad in all things. So if you want to go to Disneyland with your family, um, how come I can't click on this? Let's see. See more. Come on. There we go. Um, if you want to go to Disneyland with your family, make sure that you attend the flag retreat. Make sure that you tell the employees how much you appreciate the flag retreat. Make sure you go to Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. Make sure you write an email about the Jungle Cruise. Make sure you write an email about uh, Splash Mountain because Disney is one of the last pure, wonderful things that sort of un unites the whole world in family values and imagination and good triumphing, triumphing over evil. We're losing that too. So, Angela, I want to wake up from this nightmare. I have no desire to go to Disney World anymore. And that was my absolute favorite place. Yes, girl, but if they do have that flag retreat ceremony, or at Christmas, if they still have their amazing, very Christian-focused Christmas concert, you can still go. Because there's good and bad in all things. So, um, anyway, this was just my little video. I felt very upset <clears throat> learning about the Jungle Cruise, a ride that I absolutely cherish. And my house is a mess, otherwise I would show you my Adventureland bathroom with all my treasures from Ecuador and Mexico and Africa and Morocco and um, all, the Caribbean, all the places that I've been. I have so many cool treasures from around the world. So. I love Disney, but anyway, I just wanted to share this with you, and if you learned something from this, or you agree with what I've said, please just share this video. This isn't a super political video, and obviously it's just very chit-chatty, but I was upset, so I thought at least if I say something, see something, say something, you know? So I thought I'd say something. So, Todd, I love you and your message so much. Keep doing what you're doing. God bless you. God bless you too, Todd. Monique, Walt Disney would be horrified to see what his vision has turned into. Absolutely. He absolutely would because he was a patriot. I know a lot of people like to spread a lot of bad rumors about him, but the overwhelming evidence is that he was an amazing American capitalist patriot overall. Um, Brianna, the Voices of Liberty are also singing at the American Gardens Theater across from the American Adventure. See, Brianna, there... There we go. So when people go to Disney World, they have to go and see those attractions, okay? Jenny, let's go drink. <laughs> Kimberly, you shared it, thank you. Terry, Jamie, and uh, Kirsten, you're there. Cody, I love you guys, I'm gonna sign off. Um, Jamie Poole, you are also in my top favorite Patriots. I love you. So anyway guys, share this. Have a wonderful Sunday evening. I hope your week starts off good tomorrow. I got a lot of things coming up and um, I just wanted to talk about Disney for a minute. So maybe if collectively we stand up against this, we can make a difference. And after all, a dream is a wish your heart makes when you're fast asleep. In dreams you will lose your heartache. So maybe if we keep believing, no matter how our heart is grieving, the dream that we wish can come true and Disney will stop with this evil woke nonsense. So, oh yeah, Jenny, okay, drink around the world at Epcot. Girl, I don't have $500 to spend, okay? I am on a budget and currently reformatting my life with no money because I was fired from Delta. So I will not be going to Epcot to drink. Um, that's another thing, Star Wars Land and Disneyland. They added alcohol to Walt Disney's original park. Walt Disney deliberately never had alcohol in his park. Nothing wrong with alcohol. You want to have a good time, have a good time. But drunk people around families changes the dynamics. They had alcohol from the beginning in Disney's California Adventure. Okay, that's a separate park built across from Disneyland. But now they have alcohol for sale in Star Wars Land. And I know, I know that Walt Disney never would have been okay with that. He's rolling over in his grave with what they're doing to his beautiful, beautiful park. So also while you're in Disneyland, make sure you ride the Mark Twain Riverboat, because I have a feeling that's going to be taken away too. Um, Sherry, God bless America. Barrett, hate wokeness. I stopped watching Good Doctor and New Amsterdam. They all virtue signal and push loony leftist ideology to the extreme. Wokeness is the real epidemic. Yes. Um, Laura. Disney has gone through a phase before where everything was complete trash. Remember them ruining every masterpiece they ever made with a crappy sequel? 
but that phase has ended. Yeah. Um, I know Jenny, I was, uh, if Epcot, Epcot got rid of the British pub, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they deliberately erase certain countries from the Epcot and put in woke countries that we worship, even though they kill, torture, castrate, and imprison people like me. It wouldn't surprise me if they did that. So, um, anyway, you guys, I love you so much, and, um, I gotta go, because I'll just keep talking, but I love you, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday night. I'll talk, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye, Terry Ann. Love you.